Alyeska, an Aleut word meaning great land. Today, Alaska remains breathtaking and wild. Oh, my I was thinking if he comes any closer that, you know, it's gonna be self-defense here pretty quick. We're with my good friends for an epic hunt for both black and brown bear, a true sporting classics adventure. Being on this boat, this is a way to hunt bear. It's a husband and wife's hunt of a lifetime from the last frontier on this Sporting Classics. Some adventures are found at the crossroads of epic and unforgettable, and they're best enjoyed with a close friend, a companion who cherishes the sporting life just as much as you do. It's someone who knows the magic contained in the simple phrase, opening day and who understands that the words hunter and conservationist are one and the same. For we've been giving back for generations and sharing the outdoors with someone who celebrates the history, the art, and the romance of this way of life makes for a friendship to last the ages. One where the sound of a snickering horse, the crackling of a mountain campfire, or the whiff of gunpowder will transport you to that same stirring part of the soul. Welcome to Sporting Classics, that old trusted friend who shares your love of adventure and reminds you of the greatest Stop. days of your life. Field, sun was shining on him. It was just like a spectacular sight. That's gorgeous. First night we got on a beautiful, solid nine, just a good proper brown bear. Oh, he's taking off and running. Yeah, well, let's go have a look. I always like to be mobile this time of night. You know, we got up there, drug the boat into shallow water. I don't know, we walked in three, four hundred yards and we were creeping up there expecting to see the bear around the corner, and we popped our heads up and he was right there. I mean, probably 25, 30 yards away. Stars lined up, we got right on him. It was so cool. I could just tell by Mutt's body language that she was like, yeah, it's a good one, but. He's not one of those that bad. You know, he's, he's a little on the young side. He's one of those, he's got the genetics. Oh my gosh, give him a few years, he'll be amazing. Can I believe I just passed on a nine foot brown bear? I'm sorry, I'm flying a bear run. And we literally left the area, ducked down in the river, and we electric motored out of there. <laughs> I've seen a, a extraordinary bear here in the area very recently. He's here somewhere, so we'll just keep working at it and uh, hopefully make the, make the stars align. Alaska, home to unmatched beauty and adventure for those brave enough to leave pavement behind and venture into the expansive, untamed terrain. For Steve and Caroline Hicks, this is a bucket list hunt. A journey over land, sea, and air for a chance to hunt brown bear and black bear together. Talk about a couple's retreat. These two newlyweds are leaving the grid to hunt North America's apex predators as a team. Well, we're pretty excited about this hunt. Uh, I've been waiting for this thing for a long, long time. Good morning. <laughs> Hunting with Steven, my husband, is a, a great experience. He has really gotten me involved in this sport and that has been loads of fun we do a lot of bird shooting when i grew up i grew up in a family of boys so we dove hunted and shot squirrel and that kind of thing but this is a totally different experience for me the alaskan grandeur is a purpose-built yacht that was built for the ruggeds of the pacific northwest completely custom designed and built and she's perfect for what we do with her. You know, all you hear is, wow, you know, being on this boat, this is a way to hunt bear. 
On any hunt, sighting in your rifle is critical. On a hunt for bear, it could save your life. Steve is dialing in his Winchester Model 70 and 375 H&H &H with a 300 grain nozzler partition round. Paired with Sightmark Presidio Optics, well, he's loaded for bear. One inch left, up and down, perfect. Steve Hicks and I first met his neighbors at Bray's Island, a South Carolina community catering to the outdoor lifestyle. He's an avid hunter who has taken big game all over the world. But one animal that's eluded him so far is an Alaskan brown bear. After a few failed attempts, he's back at it again in hopes of taking one of these epic beasts. Well, we booked this hunt with glacier guides primarily from uh, reputation of our guide, Alicia Decker. Her nickname is Mutz, that's what she's known by. Uh, we live at Braze Island Plantation in South Carolina, and I think about a half a dozen of our friends have hunted with her specifically, and they've all had stellar trips. And, you know, after missing a few rounds of bear hunting, uh, I really wanted to just, you know, put my money on the chips where we've got a best opportunity for a bear. Alicia Rosenbrook Decker is known to her friends and family affectionately as Mutz. She is also known as one of the best hunting guides in all of Alaska, period. She grew up following the footsteps of legends. Her mother was the first female master guide in Alaska. Mutz was the second. And her father is a former Safari Club International Professional Hunter of the Year. By her mid-teens, Mutz was guiding clients for the family business. And when mom and dad retired, Mutz and her husband, Zach, took over Glacier Guides. In 2008, Mutz also won SCI's Professional Hunter of the Year, becoming the only father-daughter team to ever receive the prestigious honor. Our spring bear hunts are, uh, it's, it's kind of, I always say it's kind of a game of patience. Um, so this time of year, they're, they're traveling. Uh, the rut's already starting. Every branch they come by, they're rubbing on. You see? Yeah, he stood up. <laughs> Let's go get on him. All right, let's do this. I always have a plan. I always have a, something laid out in my mind where I'm gonna go and when I'm gonna be where. And by darn, it works. <laughs> stay low, stay low. Hi, friend. He came down the beach, walking, walking, walking. Closer, closer, closer. Man, look at that beast. He walked right into our laps. It was so neat. But, but young, again. A bear last night had more age than he does. Good boy. Good boy. Don't get sassy. I was thinking if he comes any closer that, you know, it's gonna be self-defense here pretty quick. Oh, Good boy. Had the opportunity to interact with him a little bit, and I handsome. And he shoved off. That was great. <laughs> We backed off down to the water, which is maybe like 25, 30 yards. And literally, we turned around, and there was the bear already in the perch that we we just left. There he is. Figured he'd keep coming. He wasn't afraid of anything. Uh, it was like crazy. As young as he is, he'll be phenomenal. He's got nice genetics. He's tall. So cool. That was cool. All right, I'll push down. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester Repeating Arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Sightmark, make your mark. Boomerx Air Guns, hunt with air. Negrini Cases, ultralight, ultra strong, the pinnacle of Italian design and technology. Animal Artistry, we finish the hunt. Drink Waterfowl, always in season. And by Safari Club International, fight for the future of hunting. Our dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before thee this evening to give thee thanks. We're a, a family-based operation, and, and you come and you become part of a family, and you get to experience a different way of life. Of course, you know, Mutz and Zach and their boys live on the boat, and it's kind of cool to see the family aspect of them, you know, raising the kids, homeschooling the kids. There's a nanny on board. Uh, they're doing their thing. We're out hunting, doing our thing. They somehow sort of make it all magically come together, and uh, so far, everybody on board's uh, just been fantastic. And we do so in the name of thy Son, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Over here, 
Looks Mutz alive. and Steve have been patient, turning down two brown bears in hopes of finding one of the massive boars that Mutz knows is in the area. The next day, they went out to one of her favorite spots and saw that their patience was about to be rewarded. This is the one. <laughs> it's one of those bears when you when you throw up your binos and look, it's there is no question. Let's go get on him. You know, we're back quite a ways, but obviously at some point you have to commit and jump on shore and get behind him. So uh, she picks a spot. Okay, stay tight behind me. We uh, got over and, and you're trying to, to get caught up on this guy and he's just nothing stopping him. He's just, he's on a mission. He's just traveling. We didn't even walk, I, I think, 100 yards, and Mutt says, all right, change up, take off your boots. Get your boots off. I said, get your boots off. Well, this is interesting. You got, waders are gone, you're not swishing in that, and then, of course, you're in your socks, and you can feel what you're stepping on. You can be quiet. And, of course, the ground is wet. Stay tight. Off we went. Push it as hard as you can. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Well, we'd see this bear in front of us, and every time you get a look at him, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. There's no ground trinkets here. Come on, quicker. Quicker. Every black rock on that shoreline is like a piece of glass. Hustle, hustle, hustle. I called it the 10,000 uh, arrowhead walk because it felt like we were walking on hot coals. I know it's hard, but we're close. Come on. And it hurt. I mean, we, we got to bleep out a lot of words, I know, because it was difficult. You're going to set up on my left here. Uh, Mutz dumped her pack on a rock, got on it, took a look at him. She said, yep, it's a shooter. He's 170. Breathe. We were within range and got Steve set up. All right, you ready to go? Whenever you're ready. OK. I, you know, he's quartering away. I basically put the crosshair high. There you go. Quartered away. Spun, ran towards the woods. Not good. It's a hell of a nice bear. Yeah. I don't know if I'm happy or mad. <laughs> but thank you. That's what's part of the adventure. We went back and got our boots and waders and got, you know, re geared. Um, by the time we got all that done, with I mean, dark, it was dark, basically. We needed a flashlight, so Mutz took a flashlight in. Oh, he's hit. I got him clear in the log. Going in Coda was perfect. She wants to go, but I can't do it in the dark. She'll get her or I will. So we'll come back in the morning. Oh, it's not supposed to rain or anything, which is great. All in all, it was all good. We decided to let it sit, you know, overnight. So I figured if we had to do some trailing or whatever, well, the next morning, piece of cake. After a sleepless night, Steve and the team returned to the shore where they last saw his 10-foot bear vanish into the thickets. The massive boar was hit hard, but in Alaska, there's just no guarantees. With the client staying out of the thick brush for safety, Mutz and a team of dogs and guides followed the blood trail into heavy timber. Good girl, Coda. I'm thinking, you know, we've got the cavalry going out. We're going to recover this bear. It's going to take 15, 20 minutes. Long story short, uh, I think four or five hours go by. And of course, the longer they're in there, you know, you get this sinking feeling that something's not right. Wasn't bleeding hardly at all, and he never stopped. He just kept moving. Five, six hours later, they roll out, all four of them, you know, heads hanging low. Pretty. Pretty heartbreaking to walk out and, and tell tell Steve we couldn't find him, but I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll be back. I'm heartbroken for you. He was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just feel blessed to have been able to um, have the opportunity to, to get close to that bear. He was unreal, truly magnificent. Steve is heartbroken but nonetheless resolute to return to the last frontier. A hunt in Alaska should stand alone at the top of the bucket list of every outdoorsman. But we can't take it for granted that the opportunity to hunt will always be there. 
That's why I support Safari Club International, whose mission it is to protect our freedom to hunt and to promote wildlife conservation worldwide. SCI is on the front lines of hunting conservation and advocacy in the U.S. And through their efforts, more hunters can enjoy their freedom to hunt here at home. SCI fights to keep our sport alive for generations to come. So once we finished up with Steve and his brown bear, it was Caroline's turn. She had a, a black bear tag and we loaded up on the, on the seclusion and headed over to the black bear island. As we were coming in to drop the anchor, we immediately saw our first bear. It's right there. This is her first animal. Um, you know, we do a ton of bird shooting, but literally this is the first four-legged creature she's ever threw a rifle up at, so. Hearts, cantaloupe size, low in center of the chest, lungs cradle it on both sides. Huh? So, so it'll be fun to, to see her today. So, you good? Yep. No swimming. No swimming. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> It's not a bad deal when your wife gets into big game hunting at this age in your life, so it's like there's a lot of trips out there I'm looking forward to, so let's hope it goes well. These are actually nice. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are really nice. Good optics are absolutely critical on a bear hunt, where the differences between a boar that you will let walk versus a shooter can be deceptive at a distance. Caroline's Sightmark binoculars offer a clear view in a rugged housing with comfortable eye relief, which is a good thing because you spend a lot of time behind glass when hunting in Alaska. We got bears. Mutt saw this bear and it was a long, long, long way away. Took a minute to get over there, got out, made a stock. Stay tight behind me. By then it was super, super, super quiet, so. Slowly, quietly, I was instructed to step in her footprint until we got to an area. Got up there, got set up. See this rock right here? Just yellow in the grass, kind of The way he was positioned, gosh, we couldn't couldn't really get anywhere to get a rest, and so. and we waited and we were watching this massive boar. Watching, 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 and we waited for him to turn with his butt to the woods so that when he was shot, he would run across the slough area. He's walking away. Gosh, we watched him for probably 10, 15 minutes. And it, you know, of course, when you're sitting there ready to roll, it, it seems like forever and the light's fading. And he's gonna wait until he turns his butt on to us. You now you're not sure if it's gonna happen or not. Want more big game? Check out Chris Dorsey's newest book, Director's Cut, a 400-page full-color celebration of big game hunting. Each signed copy comes with a four-hour companion DVD set. Order today. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester Repeating Arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Sightmark, make your mark. Boomerex Air Guns, hunt with air. Sea Run Cases, we pack your adventures and case your memories. Animal Artistry, we finish the hunt. Le Chamou, from the city to the country. And by Drake Waterfowl, always in season. After the stalk of her life, Caroline Hicks is ready to put the crosshairs on her very first big game animal. We finally turned a little bit. I told her, I said, just wait till his nose is facing away from the woods, and he came out a little bit. Just pick your shot whenever you're ready. So I counted to three, took off my safety, and I took the shot. He starts running, and then I just unload my gun. Good job. I let him like a duck the second shot. Yeah, see, this is where wing shooting comes in. Oh my God. I was amazed. I've never, ever had an experience like this. Coolest thing I've ever done in my life. 
berries. Alaska, you bear. <laughs> Uh, it's my first bear. It's actually my first four-legged animal. Um, it was amazing. Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful bear. Look at the coat, it's gorgeous. The fur was just spotless. He was beautiful, fat, gorgeous animal. I just was overwhelmed. Wow. What a magnificent bear, and it was so neat to see how those emotions sort of you know, rolled over her. It's it's a big deal to take a life, and these these big bears are just special. Um, so it was it was really neat to be able to share that experience with her. That's just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad I was with you. She's unbelievable. An athlete, a role model, and an all around fierce woman. One, two. Yeah, to see her with that bear, you know, we used to talk about how much taxidermy we have and how much more we don't need, and now it's, uh, geez, where are we gonna put my bear? In the living room, in the kitchen, or wherever, so uh, we've probably created a monster, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, we have a lot of fun together. Uh, what a cool thing to do with your wife, and uh, I don't know, I can't say enough about it. It's a really cool experience. It was a great trip. And, uh, you know, we can't wait to come back and try it again. See you guys in a couple of years. Bye. 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 Steve and Caroline are flying home to South Carolina with a new hide for their taxidermist. But hunters know that the real trophy is more than just a mount. It's the memory. And for these two intrepid travelers who shared the highs and lows of this Alaskan adventure, they can gaze upon Caroline's black bear and remember their first adventure together in the last frontier. The great land that calls to sportsmen and women everywhere.